hi there guys welcome back to another reaction video today we're checking out another session from forgotten history this one is called first slave owner in the colonies by anthony johnson without further ado let's check this one out okay sense legion pictures while slavery existed in the american colonies through the establishment of the united states Ooh. as a country until the end of the civil war there have been many misconceptions about slavery in general. Mm. Most Americans are not aware that there were some black former slaves and free men who also owned black slaves. And some became very prominent in politics as well, despite the racial prejudice that existed. Some black slave owners inherited their slaves from their masters, who were themselves freed in their wills. Wait, what? Hold on. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting lost in there. So, some black slaves if i'm getting this right they were slaves but bought their freedom and then became slave owners and some of them um, got the slaves from their masters in a will so they were probably very good slaves and then before the master died okay i will all of my properties and all of my slaves to this slave who is now a free man i did not know that ever happened i didn't even know there was a chance no becoming slave owners slaves becoming slaves owners i actually thought the, the the black people that owned slaves were were born free men i didn't know they were some of them were slaves others were either born free or emancipated by their masters and then bought their own slaves while others were able to buy their own freedom and that of their families who were okay. these black slave owners and how did they attain such a status in a white dominated society yeah what set them apart from other blacks and what made them comparable to whites in some of the colonies and later states? What changed in colonial society, altering the status of indentured servants to lifetime slaves? And why? Who was Anthony Johnson? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former Let's soldier, Marine out. Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we've answered these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. The vast majority of African Americans in the United States were enslaved, in all of the states, not just the South. Our first person of note is Anthony Johnson, who was born in Angola and captured by Portuguese slave traders, and he was given the name Antonio. Then his captors sold him into the Atlantic slave trade. He sailed to Virginia in 1621 aboard the ship James. The Virginia muster, or census, of 1624 lists his name as Antonio, not given, and he was recorded as a Negro in the notes column and indentured. Antonio, I later Anthony, too. was bought by a colonist in Virginia, but treated as an indentured servant, which was not unusual, okay. and Antonio worked for a merchant at the Virginia Company, and he became a Catholic. Johnson was sold as an indentured servant to a white planter named Bennett to work on his Virginia tobacco farm. Technically, he was not a slave because the slave laws were not passed until 1661 in Virginia. Okay, it was so just prior to that date, Africans were not officially considered to be slaves in that colony. According to the records kept by his benefactor and the existing documents, Anthony was nearly killed in the Indian Massacre Ooh. of 1622 when the Powhatan Indians attacked colonists in the Tidewater region of Virginia. On Good Friday, they raided the settlement, including the Bennett Farm, where Antonio worked and killed 52 of the 57 men present. Ooh. Antonio apparently fought back and was wounded and earned the esteem of his master. In 1623, a black woman named Mary arrived aboard the ship Margaret and John. Hmm. She was brought to work on the same plantation as Antonio, where she was the only woman present. Antonio and Mary married and lived together for more than 40 years. Around 1635, yes. Antonio and Mary completed their indentured servitude, and Antonio changed his name to Anthony Johnson. He first entered the legal record as an unindentured free man when he purchased a calf in 1647. Nice, good for him. During this early period, free blacks enjoyed relative equality with whites, okay. and about 20% of the free blacks in Virginia owned their own homes and property. Okay. In 1662, the Virginia colony passed a law that children in the colony were born with the social status of their mother. 
This meant that the children of slave women were born into slavery, even if their fathers were free, European, Christian, and white. Well, this was a reversal fair. of English common law, which held that the children of English subjects took the status of their father. The Virginia colonial government expressed the opinion that since Africans were not Christians, common law could not and did not apply to them, even if they converted, as Anthony Johnson did. Hold on. So, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So, they were not born as Christians, but ended up converting. But still, the laws, the laws that they laid and does not include them. If you go to a country and they have laws, you follow their laws, isn't it? And the laws guide you. You, you when you are in Rome, you act like the Romans, isn't that? Isn't that? It doesn't make any sense, but okay. On July 24, 1651, Johnson acquired 250 acres of land under the existing headright system. When he bought the contracts of five indentured servants, one being his son, Richard Johnson. Under the headright system, if a man were to bring indentured servants over to the colonies, and in this particular case, Johnson brought five servants, he was owed 50 acres a head for servant. The land in question was located on the Great Naswata Creek, which flowed into the Punkateague River in Northampton County, Virginia. This was where Anthony Johnson operated his successful tobacco farm, and one of his indentured servants was John Cassor, who became one of the first sure. men to be declared indentured for life, effectively a slave. Under the 1645 Why? Virginia Taxation Act, all Negro men and women and all other men from the age of 16 to 60 shall be judged tithable. So after a fire in 1652 caused wow. him great financial damage to his property, he applied for relief in the courts and won. Back then, people were taxed, not property. But indentured servants and later slaves were taxed as property. It is unclear from the records why the Johnson women were exempted, but the change gave them the same social standing as white women who were not taxed. In the colonies back then, one was judged more on their religion as opposed to race or ethnicity in general. So until the advent of actual legal slavery, upward mobility was possible for many races. During the case, hmm. The justices noted that Anthony and Mary Johnson had lived in Virginia for over 30 years and were highly respected in their community. In fact, a 1653 Northampton County Court document lists Mary as Anthony's wife. By the 1650s, Anthony and Mary Johnson were farming 250 acres in Northampton County, while their two sons owned 550 acres. They also had additional indentured persons under contract, but the exact numbers are not known. His son, Richard Johnson, also had his own indentured persons, probably given to him by his father, who were effectively slaves with a shelf life. At some point, if contracted, they would have to be set free. In 1854, John Cassor, who had been sentenced to indentured service for life for his escaping a previous owner in 1640, filed a suit against Johnson, claiming his indentured service had expired, and he went to work for Robert and George Parker. Johnson filed a freedom suit to get Cassor back, but Parker won. What is amazing in retrospect was that Johnson, a black man, was not only able to file a petition to the court, but he was able to testify and give evidence in the court, which illustrates the rather egalitarian system in place at that time. However, Johnson appealed to the county court of Northampton County, Virginia, and the court reversed its ruling and sent Cassor back to Johnson in 1855, <laughs> and Parker was forced to pay Johnson compensation. Ha. Then Castor made history, <laughs> as he was probably the first person who was declared slave for life in Virginia. That means that his black owner, Anthony Johnson, was probably the very first slave owner in all of the colonies, himself a black man. There were both black and white indentured servants, the whites being the most Irish of all, mm, who, like the blacks, course. were also sentenced to lifetime servitude before Castor's case. The difference was that the whites could eventually purchase their freedom in most cases. Therefore... Okay, wait, wait. Um, if I'm getting this right, they're all... The, the <laughs> um, so, when the Irish people like have been sentenced to life of indentured servitude, they can purchase their own freedom. But... In the case of Castor, John Castor, he can't he can't purchase his freedom. 
Am I getting that right? He can't purchase his freedom, which means he's a slave for life. He's the first person that was legally declared slave for life. And that's because um, Anthony Johnson filed a case against him. And that's why he is a slave for life. I cannot and cannot buy his own freedom. Anthony Johnson was apparently not only the first African-American whose right to own a slave for life was recognized in the colonies, he was therefore technically the first actual legal slave owner, regardless of being black or white, as established by the Virginia That's court. Black. Soon afterwards, slavery was legal in all of the colonies. Later, Johnson moved his family to Somerset County, Maryland, and leased 300 acres for tobacco farming for 99 years, which he called Tory's Vineyards. When Anthony Johnson died in 1670, that August, his plantation was given to Robert Parker, not to Johnson's children. The justification delivered by an all-right jury ruled that Anthony's land in Virginia that was given to his sons could be seized because he was a Negro and by consequence an alien. As a result, the 50 acres that Anthony had given to his son Richard wound up in the hands of his wealthy white neighbor George Parker. It didn't matter that Richard, a free man, had lived on the land with his wife and children for five years. A judge then had ruled that Anthony Johnson, as he was not a citizen of the colony because he was black, but he did own his own slaves, could maintain his property. What soon arrived after Johnson's death was a system of legal slavery in which enslavement was lifelong, <gasps> hereditary, and based solely on race and effectively established in all of the colonies in the beginning of the 18th huh. century. As a result, Johnson has been referred to historically as the black patriarch of the first community of Negro property owners in America. He was the first black slave owner to be involved in a court case that resulted in an indentured black man, John Cassar, to be legally determined as a slave for life. In effect, because hereditary slavery was not in effect during his period of ownership mm. of Castor, the slave for life and others he purchased, it is arguable that Anthony Johnson was in fact the first actual slave owner in the American and he colonies. he was a black man. And he was a black man. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten <laughs> History. Please click like. It's crazy, you know, it's crazy the amount of things we do not know. It's crazy the things that are being taught in schools and the things that are not being taught in school. If you want to go into history, why don't, why don't you just go into it wholeheartedly? Put every single fact in there and let people make decisions for themselves. Don't just fill their heads with nonsense. Don't just tell them the parts that you think is enough. And, you know, try to hide the other parts. So this man, Anthony Johnson, is the first slave owner, the first black slave owner. And the first person to take another black man to court because he wants him to serve him for life. If so, even if he had enough money, he cannot buy his own freedom. So he started it. And then once the courts ruled that like this man, Cass, John Castle, is going, is, is, a, is going to be slave for life, it means that every single black person that came into the colony, that came into the country after that, were going to be judged the same way. Why did they, why did the court just say, okay, this this case is just for one man, so let's just wrap a case just be for that person and not just, you know, make the whole race experience that history is so flawed, guys. It is so flawed. Like things that happen in the past, the things that happen in the past are just so nasty. They're nasty. If only he knew, if only Anthony Johnson knew that the thing that he was going to do was going to condemn the rest of the people that came into, into America as, at that time. Like, condemn them into being slaves for life and not being able to buy their own freedom. I don't think he would have done that. But nevertheless, they all had their parts to play. It's done, it's done. No grudges, and that's how it should be. Like, it happened. Let's all just let it go and just move on. Like I always say, just learn from it. But it's not fair that they would not add stuff like this into the school cur curriculum.
I know I wasn't taught. I don't think it, I don't think it's been taught anywhere in Nigeria. But I wonder if it's been taught in America because this thing happened over there and these people should know. It will only be fair to them that the first person that actually started this thing is a black man. And because of the decision that he made, it happened, things happened to be so. I wonder if those African Americans know. This is a piece of information I have never I have never heard. I have never heard of this. So thank you. Thank you for sharing a link with me again. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it too. I learned a lot from this, like me. <laughs> if you did, do not hesitate to give me a big fat thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, stay safe, be kind, and bye.